The Dallas Mavericks were one of the more embarrassing stories of last year's NBA season. From the excitement of trading for Kyrie Irving to not only missing the playoffs, but also the play-in, the Mavs were faced with a crucial situation this offseason. Even with a generally weak free agent class, I think the Mavs have done a fine job this offseason and will definitely be coming back stronger. Starting off with their first move of the offseason, which was moving down from their 10th pick in the draft to 12 to unload Davis Berton's contract and select Derek Lively. While I personally probably would have looked to move the pick for immediate help, if there were to be a guy that I would take here, Lively definitely makes sense. While he's a bit of a project, the 7 foot 1 big man is expected to have elite defensive potential, which is exactly what Luka needs. As I said, I would have moved the pick for a good big right now, but this also tells me the Mavs feel they are in a good place with Luka. If they truly are in a good place with him, then that's fine, but my concern comes with Luka potentially asking out somewhat soon if this team doesn't compete. The next move that Dallas did make was acquiring Rashawn Holmes and the 24th pick, Omax Prosper. While I'm not going to act like I know much about Prosper, I think Holmes is a solid big man who can play real minutes. Another beautiful thing about this trade is that Dallas just gave up cash. Acquiring a solid big and a first round pick for our purposes, nothing, is great. Again, I really think, you know, I, I, I mean, I like Rashawn Holmes over a guy like a Dwight Powell. I think there is definitely a world where he is starting by the end of the year. And people go, oh, oh, this guy averaged three points last year. He must suck. Like, no, man. Like, like Rashawn is going to be a solid big for them. Now to get into Dallas's free agent signings, the first of which being Seth Curry, which nearly made me throw my phone like a fastball. While Seth is an undersized guard, the movement, shooting, and scoring he brings is great for any team. I really, really wanted him back in Philly, but instead he ends up with another one of his former teams, the one that actually traded him to Philly, funnily enough, the Dallas Mavericks. Seth has also played with both Luka and Kyrie, so the guard chemistry will be outstanding out the gate. The next move, which was Dallas's biggest addition of the offseason, I know they re-signed Kyrie, but I'm saying addition, which was Grant Williams, which by the way, I absolutely love this signing. Grant is the exact wing play that Dallas needs around Luka. The 40% three-point shooter will be a great floor spacer and will provide a lot of playoff experience to this locker room, despite only being 24 years of age. I think Grant will shine in a bigger role and Luka will make the game a million times easier for him. The $54 million number could be viewed as a bit much, but in my eyes, 12 and a half to 14 and a half a year for a starting level forward who is still improving is just fine. Dallas also added Dante Exum, which is cool, I guess. I mean, I, like, I don't really know what to say much about that, man. I mean, he, you know, I mean, he was out the league. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, may, you know, I mean, he's gonna be in the guard rotation after Luca, Kyrie, Seth, Jaden Hardy. You know, I, I, I don't really know what Dante Exum does, but you know, I guess. They also re-signed Dwight Powell to a three-year, $12 million deal. While I don't love Powell, $4 million annually is really no big deal at all. While I think one more move could help this Dallas team, I don't know if there is a move that elevates them significantly. As for the rest of the Dallas roster, I really like what I've seen out of Josh Green, and I think he could be an outstanding glue guy for this team. I think Maxi Kleba will also be a key piece of this rotation. I like Tim Hardaway Jr. somewhat, but think that Dallas would be better off with more of a defender. However, they would not have been better off with Matisse Thybul. And as I was writing this, I could not believe that I forgot to mention this in the start. But, man, I just want to talk about to y'all Dallas fans. Because, I, cause I mean, I, ha I assume that it's mostly fans of the teams who watch each of these videos. But listen, I, I, I know you, you see the defensive stuff and you think... Blah Y'all would not have been better off with Matisse Thybul, man. Like, listen, he's a great defender, but he kind of plays a weird style of defense. Like, he's not the greatest on-ball defender. He's really more effective in lanes and off the ball. But he does often overplay lanes to a fault and fouls in spots you may not want him to, such as, you know, Game 7 of a playoff series in the last, you know, whatever, 30, 20, 40 seconds. But what I haven't even discussed yet is the fact that this man has the offensive game of a middle schooler. Trust me, y'all, I watched this man for essentially his whole career, and I really want to congratulate you Mavs fans on the biggest dodge bullet of this offseason, because Thibault really could have ruined this whole thing. I mean, like, a three-year, $33 million deal with a player option and a trade kicker wouldn't be crippling due to the amount being only around $10 million annually, but it definitely would have hurt. Before I wrap this video up, I want to discuss something I also discussed in my Phoenix video. This being that mid-season trades often don't see great chemistry until the following season. Kyrie only played 20 games in Dallas, and while he played mostly fine, there are evidently some kinks that him and Luka have to work out. Part of this is due to Luka being so used to playing in a heliocentric offense, due to the Mavs not putting the help he needs around him. 
I think that Luka and Kyrie are smart enough to figure this out, and I think that they will. Don't be surprised if at this point next year, Dallas is right back in the upper echelon of the Western Conference, and the 11 seed finish this season is remembered as a tiny road bump in Luka's time in Dallas. This team made the Western Conference Finals just a year ago with the roster that I think is, you know, again, I mean, you have Brunson, who, again, right, like, we see Brunson now. People be like, oh, they have Brunson. Like, people, I mean, I mean some people tell you that Brunson's better than Kyrie. Right? But, I mean, he obviously wasn't then. I think this team right now is better than that Western Conference Finals team from 22. And I think that this Dallas team will be right back in the mix of it next season. And, man, I think we're going to have a really, really... Again, I, I, I just think parity is back in the NBA. You know, people do this whole thing where, like... I mean, people do it after anyone wins a championship that it's like, oh my god, are they just going to be the next dynasty and no one's ever going to do anything for the next three to five years? Like, no, bro. Like, I don't, like again, Denver is an outstanding team. And do I think they could repeat? Absolutely. Do I think they could repeat winning the West? Absolutely. But, like, people just act... And, and people do this whenever a team wins a championship. I mean, last year it was, you know, oh my... Oh, I mean, yeah, sure, the Warriors are getting older, but they got Poole and Kaminga and all these young guys. I mean, why won't they keep going? You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, you know, people do this every single year. And I get it to a point, you know what I mean? Like, you see someone go through the playoffs and win a championship, especially in the fashion that they did it. And, you know, you think that, oh, my God, like, wow, no one could stop them. And, like, in that run, like, yes, like, like that was true. But, again, man, the NBA is always adapting and, uh, like, always changing. Like, it takes a team the level of the Warriors slash, you know what I mean, with or without KD. Because, you know, I mean, KD was only there for a couple of years. So, I guess, you know, they didn't really have the chance to be one of those, you know. I mean, I mean the Warriors obviously are one of those dynasties. But just the KD era when their team was that crazy to the point where we just knew that they were going to win unless it was for injuries. Like 2019. But... That's going to wrap this one up. Again, I, you know I mean? I, I got on my good tangent at the end of the video, as I like to do. But if y'all enjoyed this video, please like it up, sub to the channel, turn on that noty bell, comment any video ideas down below. I am always listening, and yeah, I am out. Peace.